Bon dia. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about the management and hydrology of catchments and the importance of time and scale. My name is Willem Pervoort, I'm with the University of Sydney and I've been working in Uruguay for the last three years. Import, if you think about catchments, catchments are actually complex landscapes which have many facets. But the important questions for landowners are generally just at the local scale, on the fields. For example, about irrigation development, fertilizer application, or the planting or clearing of change, trees. However, all land use management actually impacts the water quality and the quantity at the larger scale, at the catchment scale. This is because the stream at the catchment outlet is really an integrator of all the actions that happen related to water within the catchment. And you can see that here. Basically, everything that happens within this boundary will then end up in the stream and or will reflect, be reflected in the stream and will be, can, be, can be seen at the outlet. Basically, the stream connects the different catchment areas and this means that everything in the water catchment is connected in terms of water quality and water quantity. However, if you think about policymakers, policymakers concentrate at the larger scale. This is because catchment scale is where you can have to do the water management. This is because all the different actions within the catchment affect the stream flow. So you have to manage all the different actions within the catchment. So, the, but how do you manage actually all those different activities within the catchment space? How do you know what management actually will work? So for a person making decisions in the policy sphere, you need to, th need to think about what reasonable combination of land use actually optimizes both production and water quality and water quantity in the catchment. And that needs to consider all the different spatial scales. So to put that in a diagram, you can also think about that, that when you're in on a field, you actually have a lot of detail about what is happening. And you also, you can relatively easily manage what is actually on that field, whether that's irrigation or fertilizer application, because you are fully in control of what happens on that field. If you actually are at the catchment scale or the landscape scale, then you are not fully in control of everything that happens at each field. You actually have very low detail of what is happening. So it's much more difficult to actually manage this. The hill slope scale is what generally we consider as being the intermediate scale. And sometimes we want to manage things at that scale. If you then think about if you actually do want to manage the smaller scale from the catchment level, then of course you need a lot more data. So you need to, to actually measure all those different spatial fields and different spatial areas to be able to actually say something about what happens at the fine scale. The other difficulty we have with water and with water quality and water quantity is that there also is a large variation in time. Because most of the hydrological behavior, most of the water movement is actually strongly related to climate variability. Both in Uruguay and in Australia, the rainfall can substantially vary from year to year, and this has immediately an impact on the actual hydrology. So that means that if you actually want to say something about hydrology, and you want to say something about water, and the impact of management on water, you need to have observations at very long terms, timescales. For example, here looking at annual data, a data for over the year, you can see that the relationship between rainfall and runoff is quite different when you're looking at a year that's not a drought and a year that is a drought. And there's more work in this paper on this. But even if you look just at a daily scale, time scale, at a shorter time scale, you can see lots and lots of variation. Stream flow can vary quite rapidly with floods, with rainfall, and that makes it really difficult between this high variation to actually identify what the impact is of management. 
So should we be taking a lot more measurements? Maybe we should just be taking lots more measurements. And then we can analyze the data and we can look at whether the data actually tells us something about change on, in terms of management. For example, there's an increase in forestry in Uruguay. Can we analyze from the data how that affects the stream flow? Yes, measurement is really important, but a lot of the processes that we're talking about actually operate quite slowly. And you can't really measure 30 years to look at that impact. That would be far too expensive. We also can't look into the future from data. We can only look at what's happening now or what's happening in the past. And sometimes we actually don't want to really apply all scenarios or policies that we thought about. We just want to test a few policies. We want to know whether they will work. And finally, the last thing is that if you think about measurements as being accurate, that's of course also not totally true. All measurements have their own inaccuracy. Then you can think about what we can actually manage. So if you think about water quality, and for example, the example of buffer zones, there are many processes that actually determine the water quality. We generally think about that in terms of source. What is the source of the contaminant? Mobilization, how is it moved through the landscape? And delivery, where does it end up and where does it actually drop out of the water? Each of these processes actually have both a space and a time component. So where we place the buffer zone, how wide it actually is, and what the rainfall is will actually affect those three terms and will affect the effectiveness of the buffer zone. So what we actually need to do, and what is useful for this, is actually have some space-time models, some simulation models, that allow us to analyze different scenarios. So I would argue that space, we need space-time models to evaluate policy and management within a catchment. The nice thing about hydrological space-time models is that they can simulate the management actions and the policies, they can simulate the changes in land use, and they can simulate the climate variations that occur. So we can actually really look at what the impact is of our management. The other nice thing is that these models of water quality and quantity can be linked to economical models to, for example, evaluate costs. But it is always important to remember that models are not the same as reality. A model is always a simplification of reality. It uses equations to describe what the reality is. So there is the pro problem of uncertainty. And so how do uncertainty and scenario, scenario analysis interact? Models are a simplification and you will always have uncertainty. So can we really be confident about scenario analysis if we want to trade off management options, given that there is uncertainty? But we're also uncertain about the measured values, remember? We also said each measurement comes with its own uncertainty. The nice thing about models is that you can do these different scenarios and you can actually look at evaluating different scenarios and that way you can develop options. If the differences between scenarios are big enough, then we can try and see them, then we can actually see them as viable options and we can think about them to implement them. The other nice thing is that because you have the different scenarios, you can actually show these to different stakeholders and you can talk them through these different options. So you can communicate and evaluate the different options with the stakeholders. So in summary, catchments are mostly managed and on local fields because that's where people operate. However, sustainable water management really needs to happen at the larger scale. Everything in the catchment is connected. The nice thing about catchment models is that it allows us to understand the effect of climate variability. It allows us to perform space, detailed spatial scenario analyses, which can support management and policy. And it allows us to simulate into the future. So it also allows us to look at options, what will happen in the future. We can't do that with data. So I hope that explains a bit why we are working with models and why we think models are important to look at policy and management. Thank you.